Okay, this is Rick the Liberty at Green Lake, Wago Piusagahigan, and I'm talking to Rodney the Liberty, longtime politician and I guess community leader. Presently, he's the village, uh, northern village mayor of Green Lake. But uh, with the wealth of history and with the, the challenges of finding a relationship with our crown, I think Rodney's story and Rodney's perspective is very important at this time as, as we see the Métis governance issue being brought to Parliament. We also see First Nations making land claims. And we're going into another election year, 2024, with municipal, provincial, and Métis elections, school board elections. So just from your perspective, Rodney, you've, uh, you're a long-time resident, born and raised here in Green Lake. But the history of our families and the history of our, our North is embroiled in the challenges that you're facing. But you're also trying to correct this history and correct the story of our, our people that are uh, involved in this community of Green Lake. Guagupiusagahigan has been the center of a, a major highway with the river systems of the past. But uh, maybe just let us, let us hear from your perspective what, uh, what you'd like to share with us today, Rodney. Well, thank you for uh, uh, getting an opportunity to talk. Uh, about the history of Green Lake, uh, Rick, and uh, I'm quite happy to uh, tell the people exactly what the history, as far as uh, the uh, upcoming land claim for Green Lake, what that history involves. Uh, a long, many years ago, uh, all of us you know, from my generation and beyond, and those that followed, have often heard stories of, uh, this is an Indian reserve. And it was repeated, repeated over and over again by different elders that have come and gone. And we have elders today that are, are still living, who have uh, knowledge of the existence of a reserve here in Green Lake. And years and years and years, I've pursued this uh, 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 knowledge of it being an Indian reserve and found a lot of uh, roadblocks on the way. Uh, going back to the uh, 1980s, we uh, asked a law firm in Prince Albert to undertake this land claim. And he also said that uh, it was on a pro bono basis. Uh, in total, we've uh, went through, uh, this is the third law firm that we're on, but the two that we went through had uh, uh, years of looking at it and the first one looked at the uh, evidence that we brought forward for about about seven years, and then uh, I asked for my papers back because he was uh, taking too long for getting any action. The second one, uh, out of Saskatoon, held on to our, our papers uh, uh, for about four years. And just last year, uh, a law firm from Calgary contacted me and said they were interested in the, in the Métis issue. And so I said, okay, uh, being, being part of Métis most of my life, uh, I was uh, identified as Métis and most recently, in the past 20 years, I've identified myself as Cree. So that made the difference in my life and uh, started looking in other areas. And uh, fortunately, there was an individual in Green Lake who uh, did some massive research on uh, a property that was transferred to his great-grandfather 
in Green Lake in 1923. The Dominion of Canada land title was given to him and I noted in there that uh, uh, there were some oddities in this uh, uh, title. First off, uh, what was uh, the federal government doing in Green Lake giving federal land away to individuals when it was already a province in 1905. That raised the uh, red flag for me. And so we did a little more research on that, or he did rather, a little more research on uh, that property and uh, went back to the work instruments that are involved in uh, transfer of titles and saw another oddity happening in there, and that was uh, the provincial government was, uh, uh, if you understand uh, titles, when you do a search on them, you only go ahead, ahead, ahead. These work instruments were including blocks set off or lots set away in these large blocks that were given in 1923. Smaller blocks were then surveyed on over top of them in later years to hide the fact that uh, these massive lands were given away to the province. So on a follow-up, uh, uh, I asked our legal firm to identify which properties were transferred in 1930, 31, and they involved uh, 11 properties that were transferred and are still live titles underneath the uh, the provincial survey. So that, and in fact, uh, would would identify or prove to me that uh, the province and the federal government knew in advance prior to 1905 and we have maps uh, uh, back in those days uh, which proves that it was a reserve that prior to 1905 a group of individuals uh, from southern Saskatchewan gathered and met with the federal government to to prepare the transfer of this property so in 1905 and prior, they knew that, that this land was, uh, was questionable to say, to say the least. And to us, there was no question that it was reserved land. So the purpose of them transferring that land into these individuals in 1923 was to individualize or individualize these properties as individual owners, because knowing in advance seven years I had that they couldn't transfer uh, treaty land to the province, there was just no way it could be done. So as an alternative, they uh, chose to do it this way, to disguise the uh, fact that uh, there was reserve land underneath. It didn't work, however, because they still had to transfer all that property back in 1930. And it was, in fact, uh, reserve land. So it carries on from there. Uh, the lawyer from uh, uh, the Calgary firm caught the nuances in those land titles that the provincial government was using on these properties and knew that uh, uh, titles never go back. They went back and forth and back and forth, so there was a tremendous amount of manipulation to satisfy their surveys. So today, as we're speaking today, uh, uh, the land claim is being put together, and very shortly we, uh, we will be hearing from uh, uh, the law firm in Ca uh, Calgary. We will, however, be uh, as uh, a plaintiff, the number one plaintiff in this uh, case, 
we will be uh, have access to the draft copy and determine what has to be added or uh, omitted prior to uh, uh, placing this claim in court. So with the records that you mentioned of the land transfers back in uh, 1923, you said? Mm -hmm. So the province was created before that and uh, also Treaty 10 was signed uh, uh, pr just before the province took over. Mm -hmm. So with this, this would be Treaty 6 area is, is because mm -hmm. I, I see reference in Treaty 6 relating to the elbow uh, north of uh, Green Lake on the Beaver River. Right. So referencing this region as a territory, uh, what do you know about the history of the Treaty 6 treaty making at the time? That would have been before yes. all of this, right? Yes. Uh, treaty 6, of course, was signed in uh, Fort Carlton in 1876. And uh, all the reservations north of the... Uh, North Saskatchewan River were present in uh, Fort Carlton during these negotiations, except for Big Bear and uh, Poundmaker, who were adamantly against the uh, signing of treaties. So, uh, uh, in 1876, our chief, Kaupakunam, yeah. The history for him has been uh, erased. Uh, they don't want to talk about him, eh? For obvious reasons. Uh, uh, he was one of the main uh, uh, speakers of Treaty 6, along with uh, Mestawasis and uh, Atsakagup. Atsakagup's uh, uh, Christian name was uh, John Belange, and Mestawasis was, uh, pardon me, John Chatelain, rather, and Mestawasis was uh, Pierre Belange. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, my mushroom was uh, uh, Pierre La Liberty. Uh, Mr. Wasis uh, uh, ended up in that reserve uh, with his travels because he was uh, uh, an employee of Hudson Bay. And he ended up in uh, uh, Mr. Wasis and married one of the uh, uh, chiefs. Uh, uh, sisters or daughter, I forget. So he, they selected him because of his ability to uh, speak French, uh, to be the spokesperson for uh, uh, Mr. Wasis. And Jean Belan, or Jean Chatelet, excuse me, was also um, uh, um, an employee of the Hudson Bay. He ran the trading post in Sandy Lake. And Pierre, Pierre, we're not too sure. We do know that he, he had employment with the uh, uh, Hudson Bay also. So the Hudson Bay had a lot to do with the signing of treaties. All we know is that uh, once the treaty was agreed to in 1876, Mutapan, uh, didn't sign treaty at that point because he requested uh, 11,066 square miles of Indian territory for the Green Lake Indians. And that, of course, couldn't be uh, agreed to or offered to by the uh, treaty commissioners who had no power to, to do that, but promised that they would take it to uh, Sir John A., in Ottawa for approval. It was approved in 1877 per se, and 
They agreed to the uh, Indian Territory of 11,066 square miles. And, uh, so having done that, Green Lake went to uh, uh, Fort Carson, is where they signed adhesion in 1878, in uh, August, September of uh, 1878. They signed adhesion. So that's where the uh, 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 landmarks were discussed as to how much territory was uh, included in this uh, treaty. Yeah. With, uh, as we mentioned, uh, you know, the highway system was the river system, and, yes. and it's well known, the Carlton Green Lake Trail. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't only a trading trail, that was a traditional trail from years past. Mm -hmm. So the treaty making in Carlton Green Lake was well informed of those activities at that time. Yes. And then follow up with uh, the Treaty 6 adhesion at uh, Molinosa. Mm -hmm. That brought Larange, Montreal Lake, I believe, uh, yes. uh, into Stanley Mission, Pelican Narrows. Yeah. Uh, there's questions about Sandy Bay in there. So there's, there's mm -hmm. a lot of... Uh, a lot of research to be done, but Green Lake is what you're focusing on. And uh, yes. what evidence have you come across that that proves your story, or or that's the search that you're doing now? No, we have uh, we have uh, the evidence of uh, the treaty itself. Uh, we have the 1878 copy of the uh, uh, treaty made with Green Lake, and also the first. Uh, uh, Payout. Uh, Fourteen families accompanied him on that days, on those days in 1878, to Fort Carlton, and they were paid their annuity payments. And we have copies of those, which clearly states "Kaupakunam, uh, Kaupakunam," and his band were paid uh, about a week after, in September, early September of 78, was when they were first paid. So that evidence itself and uh, other uh, annuity payments made for Green Lake Indians, and they clearly state that it was Green Lake Indians. And up until 1952, all the reserves, including water, hand, canoe, and all those within Treaty 6, Mistawasis, all of them, used to come to Green Lake and for their treaty annuity. So Green Lake was the hub of the uh, Treaty 6 uh, bands. Okay? Yeah. So there was no doubt uh, uh, they were uh, they were treaty, uh, treaty signers, uh, co-signers of uh, Treaty 6 of 1876. However, uh, Things changed drastically between 1878 and 1885 at the start of the, uh, with the uh, Métis uh, uprising in, in Batoche. Uh, Hudson Bay Company was ransacked for most of their uh, supplies, including food and guns, ammunition by a group of Indians from Frog Lake. Uh, this was later confirmed by the manager, Mr. Sinclair, James Sinclair, I believe his name was, uh, who, who wrote that uh, Green Lake wasn't responsible for that uh, uh, break and enter, so to speak, of the uh, Hudson Bay Company located at that time at the south end of Green Lake. But they moved, they moved there uh, rapidly out of there because it was a firing zone now. And they moved up where this, the third location of Green Lake was uh, just along the lake. So when they moved there, uh, Another uh, event happened, and that uh, was, uh, it was the church, which was located in the south end of the lake, along with the, uh, the Hudson Bay Post, uh, 
Dot moved also, but the name changed. Uh, the name changed from Saint Julien to uh, Saint Jude's, and you think about that and you wonder why. Because they didn't want continuity of our people. Uh, and the reason I'll explain later uh, is they knew what was going to happen. So they changed it, and so now we have burial records to 1876, quite ironically, through uh, uh, St. Jude's. But most, some of those are uh, include the uh, St. Julien, but St. Julien records uh, exist, but we haven't had uh, we haven't had the Roman Catholic Church provide those for us yet. So that is one we're working on, and the reason for that is to prove that uh, our relatives were here way long before 1876. The first talk of Green Lake being uh, uh, a post was in 18, no, 1765, around there, 1768, a couple, uh, a couple individuals in Obishan and uh, La Liberty were dispatched from the post in Isla La Crosse to come and establish a post in Green Lake. So that's the earliest uh, post we have of uh, uh, Hudson Bay coming here. And I have found uh, a Hudson Bay survey marker. Uh, it probably can be carbon dated or whatever to the exact date. But it would prove that uh, Green Lake was here and there was a reason for Hudson Bay to move here, and that was to capitalize on the sales of furs from this area, including Waterhen and Kennel Lake and all those areas too, eh? Yeah. Because of the water system, as you mentioned before, was uh, uh, their only source of travel. And they used to gather here, uh, all the reservations used to gather here and celebrate uh, uh, different seasons, different traditions, but it was always a, a, a history of the Cree Indians, and which is why uh, uh, a lot of the education that we received didn't include that. Uh, we were uh, we were given uh, other ways of uh, being taught. And that was uh, being taught to hate our neighbors. And now I'm going back to my school days in the 60s. But in my days, we were taught, uh, you know, to hate the Indians. That isn't who we are. And by golly, you know, years and years and years of that hammering into your head, you start to believe that, hey, you're not an Indian. It doesn't take long because uh, I myself uh, had doubts of who I was at an early age, not knowing and even having a different outlook at my my blood. Uh, they didn't belong with me, but why? Because it was hammered in my head that they weren't part of my system. Yeah. Okay. So when I talked uh, my language, which is the language I had when I first went to school, I knew little or very little English. My first language was Cree. So I struggled, I struggled for a few years, you know, catching on to that uh, foreign language to me, but also got punished for speaking my own. Uh, we'd get our ears turned inside out, our hair pulled. We'd get uh, rulers that were three feet long and beaten with those and called Savage and Lucifer. And, well, I didn't want to be like, uh, I didn't want to be like that anymore. So 
uh, it reflected on a lot of my life after that. It was uh, when I left home, when I finally realized that, uh, hey, uh, I, I, I might be an Indian after all, because uh, that's the only people I can relate to. And I went to working in a different province at a young age. I left home when I was 16. And the people you associated with were Indians like us. Indians displaced from uh, uh, different parts of Alberta. And they were called Métis too. When in fact they were, uh, they were also lost treaty Indians, so to speak, stolen, stolen treaties. But we did manage to speak our language, and which resulted in me keeping it over the years. And I thank the Creator for allowing me my language, at least. Um, Maybe you just the Nihiwa Tutta Minuma and us Puga Pigs Hotama. That's good, sir. Giomo the Nihio against them, but he must be only must come goosey Akuma. The scheme, no. Our rights, our status. What is a Nihiwa to Tapsis? What is the dancer guys Nihio at someone? I eat to be a mean I a scheming at that one eat, I know. I kill him in a kill you in a meat to suck market to be man on a giva. So spots can kill you piggy mut to check. Where walk I go eat one even more, my guy. He gone on my gaggy pitaka magis chicken my wood my. He be quite a sister, chicken my Gumotamona, Gumotamona. I, uh, that's who I be me, Chicutai. I eat no agutai. Tatinane, so families who tie. He gave me a chickaski. I gave Maggie way end date. I, uh, forever and ever he gave me a chicken nineteen twenty three. Nagam gigs kita go on guy, Kimosom, and a moonstay of Chinese chicky or gigospe. Moonstay of chin stocked a magamagam a snake and away. So must now, Macmagi to go my gagi, ah, yeah. Gagi me get chicko, Macdusky, no guy, kiss to gama or go out, Uta get a regina. I, uh, Kiate. Kata, kata mue, skitam, skitam oki gau, ai, ai, we got so taxes got back, oh, eh? Maga ki ata ago na ham oki gau, kota gai gau, surveys o sita o ta ko chai, we have all to we tapasis. So iku ni kan gai, ai, suskwak ke motu ni ago, ai, mue wak na gi. Sionin, Achamon, Yuan Magagi Tahamaga. I keep big school, no big mud chick, tusky, no, so squaga, kill you with. I give up a tin, I must nag on a give us now more at a while. Kiss to the mow, kiss to Munia Ogamau, I did, I is Sir John, eh? Give us now more at which you are going to minister, so we got it to me. Privy Council in 1885 86. He must not have one. He will not have a snake and die on. He will not have a snake and die on. He will not 
kah kiogi wepu kaut na makau. Soalnya, iksi tas wati, cek so iksi wai iksi maci taka nek so akai maci mui wai pi pi na naga toki aku ti nihi awak pun pun pik spati ogi wa, iwani ku tohce. Maka yo, hiu mai gisi kemis cekanai ugma awce aye. Prime Minister. He gives his kiss to Kautnaho. Kakiogi wega gi miss. I am in I. Pogai. Nagasi musanota. And you have to take away their Indian nesineto. So. So scoi the mock. Mis kui ta sõi taagi või, mõni aogi või ka tõusi ära, nagi või tõhtse. Ma ka, et võis ka... Ta asku lab rats. If we can do it here, we can do it to any reservation. And they just about did it. And I say just about, because we're on the brink of... Bringing it back. You are on my... Kape... O pakken up. You are not my guy, my snar. You are my way home. You are my way home. So I go with us, coach. You go, you go, nah, go, my guy, go, go, we pass, get a meal. You pass, get tina, you go, pass, get tana. You go, I'm pass, get a meal. You go, keep you, me go. That's good. The United Nations Indigenous Rights Crazy one stone out to get you. Yeah. So the guy can no get that's good. The perfect time, oma. The pass, get a meal. The go, he's touch to get you. I'm staying in Alaska, I don't know why. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go to the city, and I'm going to open up. And I'm going to go to the city, and I'm going to go to the city, and I'm going to go to the city, and I'm going to go to the city. So I'm going to go to the city, and I'm going to go to the city, Mau seguna mah. Kau apa dah ayah kau wait nu waktu tu mah lagi pisik lu murtah kau mah ayah askiu mah. So mesti hendak nak kau mana? Ibu ibu nak kau musim mana? Kita kau tahu ino. Wapah dah mau mah um umaga lagi pita kau muka. Kau mesti tu kau tetnim na ni kau mah so sekarang tu mah itu magis juga nak si gua ayu waki kau kat itu magis so kispen Kispen iga, kispen tapui tau, ke pehko hoce kuma kage mutce kuma aski. Maga mui kaga skih tau, tenen dapu eh tino mai, at ni gano mai, ui pat. Kah keo eka pehtam, ai eh, Canada oma ka pehtit, ai eh, ka pehtam Canada, igua eh, mfsui timina wasa gamo ma aski. Kah keo eka pehtam oka. He was, he was a Trudeau, a Tugumakan, no, a Ottawa. He was a man who 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 was Human rights violations. Maga we still all go die. I, uh, Kimataka Mixwak. I, uh, Task Woods, I, uh, I, uh, pure genocide. Umutaga Pitaka Mixwak. He beat us, beat us, tap match, go my, to walk on Magan Nanak. He gained the imagic and the hill eat, he gained the imagic, a ski guy artic. He gagi way, so spaga kill you way, pim man and weeping a whole motor. You go miss dirty way, I knock to my chamagis swap. I must kick you, much must kick you. 
Yes, this is a, a very significant time in our history, I guess, to, to teach our children, our grandchildren of, of the wrongs that have been done in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, your, I guess, conviction mm -hmm. to correct this wrong, Rodney, it's very admirable. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a community leader. You have, you have seen the, the challenges, even just the economy of Green Lake. We, you know, we used to have a sawmill here. We used mm -hmm. to have employment here. Yeah. And now you, we just see uh, uh, the South just taking, you know, it's, it's, it's like a, a whole different level of colonialism. It's, it's uh, people making decisions. The province is making decisions on, on uh, education, making decisions on municipal services. Uh, I guess, you know, I thank you for sharing this, this story. I hadn't heard the, the Green Lake uh, story of the, you know, an, an Indian band actually being here, but the evidence of me reading Treaty and seeing, uh, you know, Green Lake being referenced. Yeah. But it's, you know, like it was hidden. Somebody was hiding something and, uh, and you, you, you know well, you know, with different communities being impacted that way. It was a big land grab for the Métis script, you know, all mm. in that time, there was yeah. uh, people taking land. So today, yeah. when I look at our community of Beauval, uh, where I'm from, Green Lake, there's no Métis land, I across. It's yeah. not Métis land, Buffalo, Meadow Lake, no. nothing. There's no, they're yeah. talking about Métis lands in, in, in Batash, but it's, those are heritage lands. Those are, you know, war. Yeah war history lands you know yeah. it's, but yeah. for us to, to live as traditional lands there's not one posted stamp anywhere so no so i commend you for your work uh, i know in in treaty there's metis that have signed adhesion mm -hmm. but in this case it it sounds like they were taking people off treaty it yeah. was a totally opposite it wasn't bringing yeah. in treaty making was a, you know making a country a, yeah. It's the foundation of our country. So yeah. you're correcting the foundation of our country. I think it's very admirable, but is there anything else that you, you'd like to share with us at this time? Uh, I know well, this story is continuing because it's, it's a legal case that's being prepared. Yes. And if you have any updates, definitely give us a call. But is there anything at this time that we may have missed that we need to know? Well, I think... Uh, uh, you understand that uh, uh, a lot of this history was uh, held back from our people. So as a result of that, we see the importance after the uh, launching of our uh, land claim. And we will be uh, providing a comprehensive educational portion to go around all over to every Indian community Indian places that request that they want to have more information, but we will be posting uh, information and uh, 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 probably some some film uh, interviews uh, uh, throughout all of this after the land claim is uh, filed. So the information process to us is very very important that we get this knowledge of. Uh, exactly what happened and just exactly who is entitled to uh, 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 be reinstated in Green Lake. Thank you, uh, Rodney. It's been a pleasure talking to you on this very important issue for our communities. It's going to impact many families. And uh, again, this is Rick the Liberty at Green Lake with the Kaugu Pierce Mayor Rodney La Liberty at Treaty 10 News. Thank you, Rick.